Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the infirmary, where it is my job to fix issues you have in your racing or more preferable, help you to avoid those mistakes in the first place. Today, we are talking about something topical since it's October. If you have qualified for Kona, first of all, congratulations. Second of all, it's only a few weeks away. You're probably feeling some anxiety around it. How are you going to make it to the start line set up for success? That's what we're going to be talking about today. And if you want to read this article, you can find it on our website, which you can locate in the down belows, or if you're listening to this in the show notes. Okay. So what's the problem? The big problem is that athletes qualify for Kona and then they blow it through mishandling race week. So today we're going to talk about how you can set yourself up now for success when race week rolls around, which is in just two or three weeks. So the first thing that you really need to figure out is, are you, are you here to race or are you here to take a victory lap? A lot of people just want to get to Kona. It's very difficult to do. And if you get to Kona, congratulations. Maybe all you want to do is just do the race, enjoy it. Don't worry about the time. It's a really great way to go. Just treat it like a victory lap and really enjoy yourself. Or do you want to perform? And that's what the rest of this talk is pretty much going to be aimed at. If you just want to have a victory lap, do your details, do your due diligence, be smart, race smart, be conservative, but just enjoy yourself. And you're probably going to have a great day. But if you are there to perform, here's some ideas that can help you have a really good day there. So first of all, be prepared to be slower than usual. Kona is difficult. The conditions are really hard. It is hillier than most people think at first. Um, and it's just a very difficult race. It usually takes seasoned professional triathletes one or two reps at Kona before they kind of figure it out. So if this is your first time, you need to kind of take that to the next level. If you are not humble going into this race, oof, the island will make sure that you are humble before you leave. Um, so yeah, really figuring out, are you here to just have fun, enjoy yourself, or do you want to perform? This is a really good reminder that you should be setting intentions for all of the races that you do. It should never just be, I'm going to a race, I want to do as good as I can. That's not, sim that's not, that's too simple. You really need to set some intentions about what success means for you. And that is the next part about managing expectations. So similar to what we just talked about, Kona is a place where you really cannot have any shoulds. Nothing like, well, I should be able to hold X wattage. I should be able to swim this amount of time. I should be able to run blank, especially on the run. The Kona run, oof, it's a monster. Even the best athletes race in Kona in a place of appreciation instead of expectation. And that's something you should be doing at any race, no matter what. But once we take expectation out of the picture, that takes away the shoulds. The, I really think I should be able to do a 930. I really think I should be able to do this. That's all got to go. You really need to manage your expectations at Kona to remove that stuff because it is going to throw you more curveballs than normal. The conditions are harder than a lot of the races that you're going to go to. Crazy things happen. So the first thing that you need to do in order to actually show up at the start line in a place where you're set up to have a good race is managing those expectations, appreciate that you are even there in the first place, because there are so many people that would love to trade places with you. And just remember that the hard part is done. You got here. And if you can come at it in that position, you're going to have a much better time out there. So next up, timing travel. Now, I know that very few of you can afford to go to Kona four weeks ahead of time. Um, 
you know, that's something that is possible for a very small percentage of triathlon. Um, and even a lot of pros aren't going to be able to afford that. So I would really encourage you to get there at least a week ahead of time. Um, that's going to give you a chance to beat some jet lag and get some things done on the early side and just sort of get your feet under you. Um, strange things can happen in Kona. Uh, your bike can arrive late. It can end up on another island. Things cannot show up that were supposed to show up. It's just a place where there's a lot going on. There's thousands of athletes that are trying to use these fairly limited resources in the Kona area. And so strange things that you're not expecting can really happen quickly. Uh, and so giving yourself a little bit more time can really help deal with uh, some of those curveballs. The next thing, if you show up a week early, you can do the Hawala swim. It is traditionally... I think it's the Sunday before Kona. Maybe it's the Saturday. Kona's a little weird because it's a Saturday race. But um, if you get there a week ahead of time, you can do the Hawala practice swim, which is very slightly longer than the Kona swim because you actually start at the start line and then you finish in the King K um, Cove, which is the host hotel. So it ends up being like just a little longer than 3.8 kilometers, which is great. Um, and you can see what swimming for about four kilometers feels like in this particular setting. Um, it's probably the last time I would urge you to, to swim in the open water on race week. Go to the Kona pool for the rest of the week. Kona pool is great, um, especially if it rains race week. If it rains race week, do not get in the open water. Um, if it rains, you're going to notice that the ocean near the shore is brown. Yeah, some of that brown is stirred up bottom of the ocean because, you know, it's a storm, it's raining. Some of that brown is um, effluent that is coming from the houses on the shore. Uh, and you just want to make sure that you don't spend too much time in there. So, but do the Hawala swim. It's a blast. You are going to really enjoy it. And it's going to set you up to really understand what the swim is like, especially if you haven't been to Kona before. If you've been to Kona before, do it anyway. It's another chance to get a great workout in a week out before you shift to your pool swims on race week. Okay, get your grocery shopping done early. Um, there's a Costco. Uh, go there, load up, get everything you need for the week. And then I really want you to minimize your grocery trips. I want you to minimize all of your trips. We're going to get to this in a bit, but that's a big one. Go get the grocery shopping done. Come home, put your legs up. All the food is done for the week. Much, much better place to be. Okay, number four. This one's in all caps. Race week is too late for heat acclimation. Getting ready, acclimating for hot conditions takes months. You certainly can't do it in a week. We've heard so many times people being like, oh, I'll just get there three or four days early and acclimate. Doesn't work. All that will happen is that you will deplete your body. You'll get dehydrated. You'll lose electrolytes because you're going to be sweating a lot more. Your body won't be used to it. And you're going to start the race in a depleted position. Obviously not what we want. So you really should have started your heat acclimation a while ago. You're listening to this about three weeks before the race. If you didn't, don't despair. There's still some stuff that you can do now. So the gold standard for heat acclimation, this was done at uh, the dearly beloved University of Oregon um, in the late 2000s, early, early teens. Um, and really the gold standard for heat acclimation is 10 sessions all in a row, 10 days in a row of 90 minute sessions, very easy riding, about 50% of FTP, pretty easy in a 100 degree room at 30% humidity. A lot of you aren't going to be able to create those kinds of very specific conditions, but you can get close. Um, the thing to remember is that this is in addition to your normal training. So you got to account for that and talk to your coach. 
This is an additional 15 hours of training, <laughs> 10 90 minute sessions. So this, you, you need to kind of like modulate the other work that you're doing. You can substitute these rides for your recovery spins or maybe some like aerobic distance spins, that kind of thing. Um, but this is in addition to your normal training. Ideally, you already did your heat acclimation over the past like four months. But if you didn't and you need something quickly, this is the best way to get there in the short term. You really, really need to rehydrate effectively and refuel effectively after these sessions because they're, they're pretty taxing, even though the intensity is quite low. 90 minutes at a moderate intensity in a 100 degree room is pretty, is pretty gnarly. Uh, make sure that you are drinking during those sessions um, and this will really help. Um, so that is uh, our suggestion. If you haven't done the heat acclimation yet, that this is what you're going to do now in order to kind of get yourself a little bit closer to being ready on uh, race day. Okay, number five beware of the race week events. We tell athletes all the time that the expo at Kona is where races go to die. Yeah, it's exciting. There's a lot of free stuff. There's people who want to talk to you. They want to talk to you because they want to sell you things. Um, and it's very easy to go there, spend three or four hours, stay on your feet, eat all sorts of wacky things, miss your hydration, do some roller spin competitions, jump on a trainer, just don't do it. Um, don't go to the expo or just go to the expo, do a quick tour, say hi to anybody you know, get in and out in 30 or 40 minutes. Just avoid the expo. Avoid the parties until after the race. There are tons of parties race week. Most of them are held on beautiful patios and balconies overlooking the sea. Well, guess what? That's also facing directly into the sun. <laughs> so a lot of these parties are like solar ovens. And I would really urge you to uh, not go to a solar oven on the week that you have a hot, gnarly Ironman at the end of the week. I get it. There was probably going to be some sadness at having missed out. But really, the parties can wait. There are great parties after the race. It can be a lot of fun. But if you're here to perform, I would really urge you to stay away from the parties. If you're here for a victory lap, whatever. Go to the parties, enjoy yourself, stay hydrated, wear sunblock, and uh, that's okay. Maybe don't go to a party every day, but yeah. Okay, packet pickup. It can go on for hours. There can be lines. It can be difficult to get your stuff. You can be down at the King K for a long time. Plan ahead, bring a bottle of fluid, bring a few bottles of fluid, send your spouse to stand in line for you and then go and join them once they're close to the front of the line, something like that. Check in and pack it, pick up. It's a lot like the expo, minimize your time. If you're a first time Kona person, you're gonna really want to like do all the things. Do all the things, but like do them for a few minutes and then, and then go back to your hotel, get your legs up hang out. Um, this is a good moment to talk about when you're going to do your workouts, do them early in the day when it is relatively cooler. <laughs> I say relatively because, you know, it's rare that it's cool in Kona, but you're not going to get any heat acclimation benefit by doing your workouts in the heat during race week. Do them early, fuel effectively, Get back to your hotel or your condo, get your legs up, relax, stay hydrated. Is there a theme to this talk? I think there's a theme for this talk. Number six, the athletes that are out riding hard on the Queen K and race week are probably not racing. There are spouses, there are partners, friends that came along. They usually like to train too. You know, they're probably triathletes and uh, they might want to get out there and go for a longer ride, go for a harder ride, that kind of thing. The athletes that you see out on the Queen K, not all of them are racing. So don't get into a place where you think that you also need to be doing that. You don't. You probably have a good coach because you got to Kona. Listen to your coach. Don't train too much this week. Don't go out there and do FTP intervals on the Queen K or like tempo runs on Ali'i Drive. 
just keep saying to yourself, those people aren't racing. And if they are racing, you can be like, well, they're going to be a little more tired on race day than they need to be. Okay. Last point. Finally, remember all that you are doing in an Ironman is a long, low to moderate intensity workout done in fairly extreme conditions. So the conditions in Kona make even a low to moderate intensity very difficult because uh, you're doing this for 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 17 hours. If you are, want to race well at Kona, there's two things that you've got to do. First of all, you have to have established a huge amount of fitness and there's nothing that you can do about that today. Uh, it's early October. Your time for establishing large amounts of fitness has passed. So I hope you did it. But the other thing that is under your control are your attitude, your effort. Those are the things that you can control from now until the race. So the really good Kona athletes are excellent at staying conservative, which is part of the effort part of things. So get your heat prep done, do some now. And then remember, once you get there on race week, the only things that are actually under your control are your attitude and your effort. Race from a place of appreciation, not expectation. Get rid of those shoulds. That's part of the attitude bit. And then keep your effort moderate, please. Believe me, I've seen so many athletes blow up at Kona and have to walk for 13 to 15 miles in the heat and the sun out in the lava fields. It really doesn't take much to ruin a race in Kona. So keep that effort aggressively moderate is the thing that we always say to people and enjoy yourself. If you do those things and you kind of relax as best you can, remember that all the work is done and the only things under your control are your attitude and your effort, you're going to have a good time there. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching or listening. And we'll see you again in two weeks, which uh, I believe is going to be race week. So we should have something fun that you can listen to that week that is going to hopefully just calm you down, make things fun a nice little gift before you go off on your Kona adventure. Congratulations on qualifying. That's so rad and have an awesome race. Thanks for coming to the infirmary.